special presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. the newly renovated and incredibly beautiful Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Boxing After Dark, featuring two of the sport's ultimate warriors, Arturo Thundergatti and Irish Mickey Ward, as they get set to battle in the 140-pound weight class. Then we'll bring you highlights of Prince Nassim Hamed's first fight since having lost to Marco Antonio Barrera 13 months ago. He faced Manuel Calvo of Spain in London earlier this evening. We'll give you a look. Although it's only May, many ring observers predict Gaddy Ward will challenge for Fight of the Year honors at the end of the calendar. In the past, both fighters have shown willingness to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and trade shots. But in his last fight, Artura Gaddy employed a more tactical style in a four-round destruction of Tehran Millet. So can he build on that performance, or will Mickey Ward lure him back into being the Gaddy of old? We'll know more as both fighters get ready to enter the ring moments from now. And hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this edition of HBO's Boxing After Dark. We on the telecast team have long looked forward to this fight, as have the writers and other expert observers at ringside, because if you're old enough, as all of us on this telecast unfortunately are, to remember the Friday Night Fight Series sponsored by Gillette in the 50s and into the early 60s, the series which showcased fighters like Kid Gavilan, Emil Griffith, Joey Giardello, Carmen Basilio, Gene Fulton, fighters who always gave a maximum effort and brought honor to the combat that they conducted in the ring. You're about to see a Friday night Gillette fight on Saturday night on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Those are the kinds of fighters that Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward both are throwbacks to an era of honest fighters and great fights. Working with me as always and another veteran of viewing the Friday night fights on Gillette's all, uh, Gillette all those years ago is uh, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, uh, what do you make of the significance of the absence of any inflated significance related to bogus titles or, uh, or belts uh, or even the real kind in this fight between Gaddy and Ward? Hopefully it is significant. Hopefully it means that in addition to the best and the brightest, we'll be bringing you more of the bravest and the boldest. To Gaddy and Ward, the only title that means anything is warrior. The only belts that mean anything are the ones that they punch each other with. These are character actors who won starring roles, soldiers who won battlefield commissions. Jim, as James Elroy has written, this is one of those fights that's balls to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> James is sitting there tonight in Kansas City just waiting for this one, I'm sure, and uh, flying in from the Poconos overnight, uh, leaving behind his training camp duties with Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis only for 24 hours. Our Boxing After Dark expert commentator, Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, glad you could be with us. Uh, as the opening mentioned, Arturo Gatti reverted back to the boxer puncher style with which he first won a title seven years ago in his destruction of Tehran Millet. So can he keep going with that style transformation or will Mickey Ward with his strength and durability lure Gaddy into the kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe battle that we know Arturo really loves? Well, based on what I've been hearing from both sides, I expect Gaddy to come out trying to be more of a boxer, particularly excited about his new techniques that he's learning from his new trainer, uh, Grady McGirt. And also I'm hearing Mickey Ward said he's going to box him. 
So I think they're both going to come out and maybe start off that way. But knowing that Mickey Ward lost his last fight because he got behind early in the fight, and then he went to the scorecards with accidental butt, so he lost his fight off of that. So he should come out earlier. I think the fact that Gaddy, I think, is a better puncher and a better boxer. And the most part, Mickey Ward's best punch is a left hook to the body. And pretty much that's something I think that Gaddy's going to be prepared for since it's primarily one punch. But I think with all of it considered still, it's going to be a toss-up because Gaddy's a puncher, but I think the hometown crowd and the fact that Gaddy does swell up and get cut a lot easier because of the high cheekbones means that it's going to be a toss-up fight and the warrior mentality is going to prevail when it's over with. Yeah, it's no accident that we're going to see in the corners tonight two of the greatest cut men in the sport, Al Gavin in the corner of uh, Mickey Ward and uh, Joe Souza in the corner of Arturo Gaddy. These are the kind of fighters who need their cut men. Tail of the tape now for these 240-pound fighters, and as you can see, Gaddy is by far the younger of the two already on the dark side of 30, though. Mickey Ward has gotten better in the last few years despite his advanced age. They're both 5'8". They both have a reach of 68 inches. They both spent about 10 seconds on the scale, and we're told that they weighed the contractually agreed-upon limit of 141 and a half, whether they did or not. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Arturo Gaddy Mickey Ward fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non-title, using the rules of the Mohegan Tribal Gaming Commission. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt and that cut causes the fight to be stopped. We go to the scorecards if the three rounds have been completed and you can be saved by the bell in the 10th and final round only. Jim. Irish Mickey Ward from up the road in Lowell, Massachusetts. As you can see, he has fallen short in his efforts against championship quality fighters. That doesn't mean anybody's eager to fight him. One reason is because he always is in supreme condition. Amazingly, Mickey Ward has been a junior welterweight for all 17 years of his career. He insists that fighters who move up in weight frequently do so only because they don't want to train as hard as they did when they were young and hungry. Our closer looks in the ring tonight, not just at what the fighters have accomplished, but at the big star of the show, how they fight. After taking almost three years off, Mickey Ward came back against an undefeated prospect named Alfonso Sanchez, lost six straight rounds, and won the fight with that one body punch. Then after losing a championship shot at Vince Phillips, he came back against a really rugged Englishman in London, had to score a knockout, and simply outwill Shay Neary. In his last fight against Jesse James Leha, he lost a technical decision when this cut was declared wrongly as it developed because of a headbutt. So Ward comes in off that disappointing outing against Jesse James Leha, a fighter who may loom down the road again as an opponent for either of the two fighters we'll see tonight. And here comes Artura Gatti. told us, Jim, that his father told him you can't be a fighter and a rock and roll star at the same time. That's when he seemed to have toned down his act outside of the ring, trained as hard as he could, and found himself at 140 pounds at the correct weight at this stage of his career. And within the cult audience of boxing, almost a living legend because of the drama of his fights. A closer look at Arturo Gatti. After winning the 130 pound championship as a boxer, he was knocked down and beaten up by one Wilson Rodriguez. His eyes nearly closed and he came back to score a melodramatic knockout that made him a star in Madison Square Garden. Then against Gabe Ruelas, another very tough fighter, taking a beating. Finally, he comes back to reestablish himself with that left hook as an old-fashioned, come-from-behind, one-punch knockout fighter. Against Ivan Robinson, 
the fight of the year. He lost the decision. He also lost the decision in the rematch. But, the, but in the 20 rounds, we had nonstop action like this. He also lost to Angel Man Freddy when his eye busted open in the first minute of the first round. He couldn't see punches coming. The fight was stopped. They're in the ring. Let's go to Mark Biro for the official introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mohegan Sun Arena near Uncasville, Connecticut, for an evening of HBO Boxing After Dark. Under the promotion of main events in association with the Mohegan Sun Casino and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, this Bud's for you. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the Mohegan Tribal Gaming Commission Athletic Unit. The unit chief is Jerry Boyle. Ring officials assign your ringside physicians, Chief Ringside Physician Dr. Michael Schwartz, Dr. Anthony Alessi, and Dr. Joseph Carpentieri. Your timekeeper is Michael Murtha, and counting for the knockdowns at the bell, the alternate referee, Johnny Kellis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your HBO Boxing After Dark main event of the evening, 10 rounds, junior welterweights. Your judges at ringside are from Braintree, Massachusetts, Richard Flaherty, from Brookfield, Connecticut, Frank Lombardi, and from Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Your referee for this event, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the incomparable Frank Cappuccino. Here now are your principals introducing first, in the blue corner to my right, wearing the white trunks with the red and blue trim, weighing 141 and a half professional record, 37 victories, 11 defeats, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the pride of Lowell, Massachusetts, Irish Mickey Ward. Ward. His opponent in the red corner wearing white trunks, Blue trim, also weighing 141 and a half pounds, with a professional record that reads 34 victories, five defeats. He has 28 knockouts. He boxes out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Here is Arturo Thunder Gatti. Gatti. Ten rounds, junior. Welterweights. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions in the dressing room. Now I want you to. Be careful on each of your corners where you might be a little wet. So just be careful when you move into the corner. Now both these touch gloves, I leave it with you. Back in the corner. Stay back in the corner. If Mills Lane, who recently suffered a stroke, were here, this would when he appropriately would say, let's, let's get, get it, it on. on. This is for you, Mills. And the atmosphere in the crowd was lively enough during pre-fight introductions that veteran referee Frank Cappuccino came over to timekeeper Mike Murtha and reminded him, when you hammer the bell, you hammer it hard. We've got to be sure of hearing it. Oh, everybody's expected a good fight tonight. Mickey Ward starts off with a left hook upstairs, not the trademark punch. That one goes to the ribs, but perhaps a reminder to Gaddy, I'll throw it up here too. Take 
on how to fight Mickey Ward, who is a body puncher destroyer. Well, he says body punchers don't like it to the body. I'll hit him in the rib cage too. And I think he's going to do that too. But Here's another big sure. left hook. Mickey's not going to get behind on punch in this fight in case he gets stopped on an accidental injury. That's for sure. He's coming out off the bat. Normally a slower starter who sort of builds tempo as the fight goes on, but that's a good point. He probably learned a bit of a lesson in Texas about the importance of getting off early. Yes, but he's also going to learn the importance of throwing a straight right hand, too, because that looping right hand is not going to be effective tonight. He's been all over the scale, 130, 135, up to 147, now back to 140. I think he may finally be fighting Emmanuel at his most effective weight. Yes, and he shows combination punching skill there. And there's a cut on the right, on the Mickey Ward. right eye of uh, Mickey Ward. It's on the corner. I don't know if it's dangerous, but from that left hook that Gaddy Land landed earlier. Gaddy's looking very good. His troopers punch is real loose, freely. Everything is flowing beautiful, and he's moving out of the way very gracefully. Yeah, Arturo looks good in there as he's already opened up the cut above Ward's right eye. Same eye over which Ward was cut in his loss to Vince Phillips. And it looks, it does look like a bad cut, Looks Jim. deep. Well, you know, we mentioned the two cut men, Al Gavin and Joe Souza. You don't normally hear those names in the pre-fight on camera, but it was necessary tonight. That's right, and if he can make it back to the corner, Al Gavin is a good cut man. In fact, both of them are good cut men. Al's as good as there is. If there's anybody who's that good, it's Joe Souza who's across the yes. way. So both guys may end up bleeding if this fight continues after the way that it's going. Well, any fight in which Arturo doesn't bleed is an upset. Arturo. Look at the combinations, though, from Gaddy. Everything is flowing beautiful. Very natural. The fighters who are customarily give Gaddy trouble have jabs. And we haven't seen any jabs or many jabs coming from Ward. Now that's a great point, Larry. In his losses to Ivan Robinson and Angel Manfredi, he was beaten to the jab. Ward walks in without jabbing. That's perfect for Gaddy. Stop, stop. Arturo looking over at us as if to say, I agree with the call. Good round for Tara Gaddy. Excellent. Hold up, and it's on the outside. Now, what, huh? If I get... Right here to the right. Right here. Now, this is Gavin to the right of your screen, and you can see that Al has already gone to work. Okay. Let's take a look at how this cut was opened in the first round, I believe, as Larry said, on an Arturo Gatti left hook. Well, the cut's already there. But bad of problems as the cut may be, I think the biggest problem that Ward is having is dealing with the rhythm right now, Gatti. Gatti's got his rhythm to move it. He's doing everything very natural. Everything is flowing smoothly. And I think it's going to continue that way unless Mickey steps it up. I think he's going to have to crowd Arturo against the ropes. He won't beat Gaddy in the middle of the ring. Gaddy simply has better feet. That's a good fact. And, he, and also upper body movement. Gaddy's moving his upper body. Not just moving. He's moving, bobbing, weaving. Mixing up his punches very well. Uppercut, left hook. Gaddy firing from all angles. It looks so far as though the marriage of Gaddy and Buddy McGirt is paying huge dividends for Arturo's basic craft. Absolutely, he looks very good. He's doing a more variety of things, but the most part, Mickey's very predictable right now. And, and, and the speed and the different movements is really confusing Mickey, and you can see it if you study his mind. But we've seen Mickey Ward lose every minute of every round and win the fight, as he did against Alfonso Sanchez. He can never count him out. Let him go, let him go. having 
problems with the power that Gaddy's got. Because he, he, Gaddy's a good punch. He turns all of his body to his punches. And he's what we call a free puncher. He lets all of his body turn all of it through stop, very stop, loose stop. and natural. And it's the variety of things that he's doing that's really causing a lot of problems. You understand? Whereas Mickey is, okay. is very uh, predictable. Plus, I think the punching power of Gaddy, in addition to his boxing, is very effective. Yeah, between rounds, when we focused on Ward's corner to watch Al Gavin work the cut, I'm told that Arturo Gaddy's people, trainer Buddy McGirt in particular, were telling him, you've got too much power for Mickey. He's not used to facing power like yours. At this stage, he's got a little bit of too much of everything. Started to say, I think it's the speed more than the power. The speed, and, and he's shooting uppercuts, left hooks, right hands over the shoulder, a variety of things. My Body God, punches. Box numbers are through, through 70 punches in round one. He's going to wind up throwing more than 70 at this rate in round two. And he's connecting at a high percentage, and Ward is just occasionally getting in a pot shot here and there. The impressive thing about what Gotti is doing is that when he throws those combinations, he's not staying there long enough to get hit in return. Now, Ward is doing exactly what he should do. Now, he's closing the distance now to try to neutralize some of the movements. He's closing the distance before he punches. Here you keep the punches up. And now keep Cappuccino warning Gaddy to keep punches up. So let's make a note that there was a verbal warning at the end of round two. And now listen, when he gets close to you, keep your hands up. Now he's trying to get that body shot. So when he gets close to you, just keep him turning, okay? You're boxing beautiful. Just keep using the speed, okay? Straight right hand. You can punch on him all day long. You just stand there. Head movement, double jab. Head movement, double jab. You over here right, you got to keep your right hand out. All he's looking for is a hook on an uppercut on you. That's it. Deep breath. Come on, you're used to 30 seconds in us. Put that back to the I even swallow. Just keep moving your head. As long as it goes, the better it's going. Come on, babe. You heard him there. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on, man. Come on, man. Box numbers through the second round, Arturo Gatti averaging 29 jabs thrown per round. That makes it very difficult for Ward, who doesn't really have a jab, to start his attack. But Ward seems to be applying more pressure now and trying to get close, and he's going to have to continue doing that. He can't sit back at a distance. He's going to have to get very close to Gatti if he's got any chance of pulling this fight off. And he's going to have to trust that Al Gatti can keep the cut under control and keep him in the fight even as he presses both. Yes, he does. Gavin Singh have did a good job. Usually, a good cut man takes two rounds before the blood really coagulates. Hard left hook by Arturo Gatti. Gatti landing a lot of punches cleanly and sharply. Ward trying to feint his way inside. Looks as though Gaddy is so conscious of Ward's left hook that there might be an opening here for Ward to land the right hand, but he's not really quick with the right the way he is right. with the left. See, Ward is primarily dealing with one punch for the most part. It's most of the punch is going to strip his left hand, and most good fighters can, can neutralize that. He's going to have to stay much, just as he's doing now, he's going to have to continue to do that, to stay close. Gaddy. Turning away from Ward at the ropes and back to the center of the ring. Well, he's not going to be able to deal with Gaddy's speed anyway, so he just wants to stay close to him. That's the only chance he's got. Stop, stop, stop. Earlier in the round, Ward left, landed his first good hook to the body. He has, right. to, he has to do more of that if he's going to be there in the second There's half of the one. fight. another one. He just landed his second and, good left to the body. You've got to remember also that Gaddy himself cuts up and swells up pretty bad himself. Well, and, and if anything will take Gaddy's foot movement away, it would be that left hook to the body. If Gaddy. Ward could get it in there. Yeah, and he's getting closer and closer now. What Gaddy's people have been most concerned about is just this kind of stuff that will keep Ward in the fight long enough to if he bust up yeah. Gaddy. Yep, and here, yeah, comes right the, here comes the Lowell, Massachusetts contingent rising to the occasion for their fighter. Yeah, and here yeah. Gaddy with some of that, I'll give it yes. to him as a body medicine. Now the fighters turned out to be what we expected.
So much better boxing. They're standing up in round three. Maybe that, by those body punches have slowed Gatti down a little bit. And now he's trying to slow Ward down with body punches, too. Good sharp left hook upstairs by Gatti. Uppercuts for Arturo. Hashtags. Ward's cut opening again. Ward has got to keep it in tight like that. It's That's what they came <laughs> here for. <laughs> you got his respect. Listen to me. When you get inside, don't take that body shot, Arturo. Don't listen to me. You finish beautiful. Don't, you don't have to take that shot. Don't take it. As soon as you get inside, go to your left. That's all he's trying to look at me. Look at me. I'm over here. I'm over here. Stay focused, Arturo. Yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. You're boxing beautiful. Don't take that shot. Okay? More boxing comes your way next month. June 1 on HBO. First, you'll see a preview show counting down to the Lennox Lewis Mike Tyson fight. Then a live heavyweight fight between Evander Holyfield and Hasim Rahman. June 8 on pay-per-view. The Lennox Lewis Mike Tyson fight for which so many have waited for so long. It says here on the card, it should be a memorable night. I read that with a straight face. June 22 on HBO pay-per-view. The rematch of 2000's fight of the year. Eric Morales against Marco Antonio Barrera. Live from Las Vegas. Great fight. Round four begins. In round three, the two fighters, by CompuBox estimate, landed a combined 53 power shots. 30 for Gatti, 23 for Ward. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Arturo Gatti. Jim, I gotta tell you, Arturo Gatti showing us not only beautiful combinations, but really, really nice ring generalship. It's a big ring, probably something like 22 feet. He's moving beautifully, keeping Mickey Ward off balance. When he did stand still in the last minute of round three, he ripped those shots to the body. Always combinations. I think Arturo Gatti's won all three rounds, although the third one was close. Given that Ward is the New England fighter, Manny, you have to be surprised at the size of the ring. Yes, I thought it would be a smaller ring to favor him, but it, right now the ring is a big ring, which really would favor Gatti since he's coming to this fight, predicted that he would be the boxer. Gatti's left eye beginning to swell. No blood yet. Gatti's left eye swells in virtually every fight. That's because of those high cheekbones that he has. both of those guys. I don't think the boxing is going to be too much from this point on. I think Gaddy's going to have to fight Mickey because Mickey's putting too much pressure on him now and he's going to resort back to what he's been doing most of his career and that's to punch. Gaddy to the body. Gaddy with uppercut. Right hand. Oh, this is good stuff. Looks like there's blood coming now from Ward's mouth. But we saw Ward in those type of fights. You remember the fight with Emmanuel Burton, so this is just one of his normal fights. Fight of the year for 2001, Ward Burton. Broke a lot of oh my God. Oh, that's another right-hand bomb by Mickey Ward. Gaddy takes this one a little better, but he's been rocked in this round. Oh, big left hook by Ward. Big left hook by Gaddy. In that fight against Emmanuel Burton, the 35-year-old Ward, averaged 118 punches around and he was surprising me now he's coming back with a beautiful short right hand that's what his most effective punch about has been the right hand now more so than the body punch Cappuccino. Didn't hesitate at all. He was sure of what he'd seen. Now, he's got five minutes. To the end of the round. They've sounded a bell it, to end the round. Keep doing it. You know what's happening. Okay. Senior, go ahead. Harold, why did the round end? Okay, Jim. Let me tell you something. It's miscommunication between the referee and the timekeeper. When Frank Cappuccino saw that low blow, the 
is no question he should have yelled time out. At which point, Mickey Ward would have up to five minutes to recover. If he can't, you know, continue up to five minutes, he loses. But the timekeeper never stopped the clock. And that's all there was to it. He kept let, he let it run. He let the round run out. Does he have five minutes the now? The still have five, no, yeah. No, 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 absolutely not. One minute rest period. Let's take a look and still. see if the blow was low. Yes, it was. Yep. That's how we saw it. I'm all set. I want to go. Okay. Mick, you heard Mickey Ward. He's all set. He wants to go. Why is that not a surprise? And round four, both guys threw more than 30 power shots and landed more than half. So it is becoming the slugfest everyone anticipated, despite Arturo Gatti's skillful efforts to make it a boxing match in the early rounds. He takes three plus power shots. But he doesn't return fire until Gaddy is finished, which invites Gaddy to keep going. Emmanuel, how discouraging is it to Arturo to have landed the kind of bombs he's landed? It's got to because he's treading full force on those shots. And actually, hasn't really hurt Ward. He hits exactly. him with the punches. Full force, and Ward may wiggle a lot from the impact of it and move his, lose his balance, but he's never shown that he's been seriously hurt yet. And the only one to me that's been hurt has been Gaddy in time, but he got hit with a short right hand. Absolutely. Another short right hand by Ward again. We're about halfway through the round right now. We've lost our round clock. About a minute and a half to go in the round now. Blood begins to flow from above Ward's right eye again. But look at the distance between the two fighters. This is becoming Mickey Ward's fight. They're fighting in a phone booth, and that's the way he wants it. You know, this is reminiscent of a fight many years back since we're speaking of the 50s of a guy named Colin Basilio and Tony DeMarco. Basilio, one of the fighters I mentioned at the beginning of the night. Yes. You know, you could take those white trunks off and put one pair of white and one pair of black on and we could go all the way back to the 50s. Oh, it is man against man in there. Oh, this bout is scheduled for 10. Well, I'll tell you what, the fans are going to get 12 rounds of action out of 10 rounds tonight. No, they're going to get 15 or more. Rounds. Oh, look at that! Look at that combination! And they're two of them! Daddy's right eye is bleeding! Yeah. The blood begins to oh. And he's loaded up every punch! A tremendous rally by Mickey Ward! And the timekeeper can't seem to get it straight when to ring the bell. I see what Frank Cappuccino was saying now. Yep. Just aim your punches. You got this guy. I got the power, man. Don't worry. Keep that. How you feel? Give me your head. Let me huh? work for you. Well, sir. Touch him. Touch him to turn out. You stay on the side, take an unnecessary body punishment. Don't take it. Rinse this, Mikey. Come on, baby. We got to suck it up like a champ now. We Gaddy talked earlier of the, shots. of the tremendous... Everything that he's shooting is landing pretty good, turning all of his body weight through on every punch. And at this stage, if you don't look closely, you think that Ward is about to give. And here Ward's coming back. And I didn't think that Gaddy was expecting to throw that many punches, especially the short punches that he's shooting. Larry, right, we're halfway through. We talked about the amazing condition and endurance and Will of Ward, and we saw it in that round, how he came back at Gaddy, as, as Emmanuel, as you mentioned, Gaddy hasn't had to throw that many punches for a long time. No, I mean, and he's landed some beautiful shots. 
But, you know, and, and as I said earlier, now Gaddy is starting to swell up and, and bleed also. But at this stage, I would still have Gaddy with him, but it looks very promising for Mickey. Because Mickey has not been hurt yet. He's been hit with some great shots, but he's never staggered away from it all. Gentlemen, in the fifth round, they landed 98 punches. My CompuBox estimate, 88 of them power shots. Almost evenly distributed. Right, keep that control there. A hellacious round. So the pace slows slightly here in round six. Get his fight this sticks is going to come out now, and it's going to be nothing but a slug for us, I think, for the most part, man. And I think Ward is going to put enough pressure on him where he can't really box him. He's going to have to fight. If Mickey Ward wants to come to you, he will walk through a hailstorm of punishment to do it. And you better watch that short right hand that he's trying to get close to shoot over the shoulder. Now, that seemed to be his key punch. He's Davis turning it over. Again. Yes. He's turning it over like never before. And that's just as dangerous as the left hook to the body is at this point in the fight. Oh, oh what a haymaker by Gaddy. And Ward just comes right back. Business as usual. Big left hook by Gaddy. Ward says, I'll walk with you over here. Relentless. That's the right hand again. And he shoots it straight across the shoulder as if he's anticipating the movement of Getty. Instead of shooting at Getty's head a lot, Ward is shooting it straight at his shoulders and he's catching him because most of the time, Getty tries to avoid the right by going down instead of pulling away. But Gaddy is fighting a good round here. He's winning this round big. He's, he's gone back to some movement, throwing combinations, trying to move away, standing and fighting, moving again, trying to move his upper body. This is a very good uh, Gaddy we're looking at here. Yep, in the War of Wills, Gaddy has taken it to another step. And now Ward is going to have to reimpose himself yes, as he did in rounds four Gattis, and five. Gaddis went back to boxing. I don't think he would, but he's went back to boxing. He's working a very effective too. Yep. And Joe Souza did such great work that I see no blood on Gaddy's right eye. Ward pounds his heart as if to say, I can take you anything you can give. And he can. That's it, baby. That's the key. Listen to me. He's in the same fight you're in. Okay? He's feeling the same tired as you, if not tired. Nice and smart. Okay, now when he gets close to you, listen to me. If you don't feel like punching, move your upper body. He's not going to do anything. Okay, then go back to the jab. You see you on the ropes, you touch, touch, touch. Keep doing that till you get that second win. Take a deep breath. Now we boxing like Arturo Gatti. Okay. Listen to me. Look at me, baby. You got this fight. You can rest all day tomorrow, you understand? Yeah. This is for all the marbles, baby. You understand me? Box, we give a business. You know what I would do? Nick, you got to back him up. He's hitting it here, he's hitting it here, Nick. Do it back, please. Come on, come on, let's go. People in boxing have been looking forward to this fight for a couple of years. Now They're getting go. what they were looking forward to. And six rounds in the books, four more to go. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, Jim, four rounds to two, 57-56, Arturo Gatti. Jim, uh, Mickey Wood gets an extra point in the fourth round because Frank Cappuccino took away a point for a low blow. It may be crucial at the end of this fight. Round five, I thought Mickey Wood pulled out because sometimes what you do in the last 30 seconds is just an accumulation of what you've done in the first two and a half minutes. And it was a great rally by Wood at the end of round five. Round Six Arturo Gatti comes back strong. Four to two Gatti, but Gatti by only one point. I have Gatti ahead four, one, and one even because of that point taken away. And for the moment, Gatti has succeeded in tempting Ward back into a boxing match. Yes, he has. Gatti's doing a beautiful job. He's going back to his boxing, his corners, his structure. He's mixing up his attack. Once again, Mickey seems to be confused.
And you heard the impassioned speech between rounds by Buddy McGirt, who's been there against some terrific fighters and is turning out to be a very good trainer. Ward pops that Gaddy again with that right hand. I wonder what 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 kind of brains are head that both of these guys have. I mean, they get him with punches right on the chin, and it seems like it just stimulates him. Well, he's another right hand again, and he comes right back. Big yeah. counter left hook by Gaddy there, as Ward was a little long with the straight right hand. Left it out there, Arturo popped it. All right, good, good, good. That's what I want to see. I, I think I think Gaddy's doing beautiful with his new style of boxing. He's mixing up his work, boxing beautiful, but still he's the big puncher. He still sets down every once in a while and makes you respect him. He can still fight. Yeah, he's, and I love his punching power. Through six rounds, Gaddy landed more than 200 punches, most of them on the face of Mickey Ward. And here comes Ward. Let him go, let him go, let him out. You can't stop him. Before a big fight, most fighters like to try something new in training. Ward's innovation this time around was to rest only 30 seconds between rounds of sparring. Yeah, but I don't think nothing can prepare him for this type of a fight here. Not only with a guy who's a busy fighter, but also a great puncher. At this stage, Mickey's been outgunned in terms of talent, skill, but not in terms of heart. He's always trying, but I let him go. He's just let him one go. step behind. Come on, come on. turned southpaw here at the end of the round. To no great effect. Hey, listen. We got 10 minutes, baby. Can we get 10 minutes? Yes. Okay, listen to me, baby. When he gets close to you, Arturo, if you're not going to punch, have your hands up. Just move. He's got, he don't want to fight no more. Okay, he's looking for the one shot. And go back to the... You got luck. I'm all right. All right. Yeah. Put it on him now. Okay. You got to use Eight everything rounds. with your left hand, Mick. Everything with your left. Yeah. Bang the shit out of him. Mick, like, don't be a be punching bag. If you're going to be a punching bag, I'm not going to let this go like this. Fight hot. Okay. Keep back. Dick Eklund, Ward's brother and trainer, said he's not going to let him be a punching bag. Don't take okay, so many okay. punches. Can he start to avoid him? Is he, no. is, is he Mickey Ward if he does avoid them? I don't think he can avoid it. I think all he can do is just try to fight his way through the trouble because he's not going to ever avoid all let of those go, punches. Gaddy is extremely sharp tonight. Gaddy threw 31 jabs in the seventh round. If he keeps throwing 30 jabs around, it's going to be awfully difficult for Ward to reel him in. It's going to set up the chance for Arturo to outbox Ward down the stretch as he's done through most of the first seven. You know, it's hard for me looking at the wars that I've saw Gaddy in, and he's fought all of the, I mean, great wars and all of the top fighters. To see him moving like this, like a young fighter, just totally amazing to me. And those wars you saw in the ring, he had some equally vicious wars with the champagne bottle and the nightlife oh, on yes. the circuit in New Jersey. You know, but he's gone, through <laughs> he's gone through changes before. As an amateur, he was a boxer. Early in his pro career, he was a brawler. Then he changed to a boxer to win a 130-pound title from Tracy Patterson. Then he became a brawler again. And here he is back to boxing. Just the fact that he's here is amazing. You give his, his management team great credit for taking him off for a couple of years to help restore him and give him easy fights and not use him up because most of us didn't expect to see him still in the ring at the age of 30. He's got a manager I, named Pat Lynch who's been as loyal and steadfast as any manager in boxing can be with Arturo Gatti. He's kept his career alive. Yes, but even with all of that, there's something unusually physically in this man for this man to take all of this. He's just one of those gifted guys like Yvonne Durrell. So you just run across guys like that sometimes. Another, another Canadian. Another, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Absolutely. I thought that's why you were using Durrell <laughs> as the standard there. And I thought know, it was a given. And you know, all of the punches Durrell took when you meet him 
He speaks like a, a British scholar, so go, very, go. very smart, intelligent man. Uh, you don't fight with your head, Arthur. Here's that right hand again. and then the high hard one again left right combination landed flush ward bleeding heavily and daddy was hurt by a left and a right is hurt. Yes. And this oh my gosh <laughs> oh. oh my goodness <laughs> you gotta it up. what a fight It looks like Mickey Ward is going to try to pull off another Emmanuel Burton. Look, come here. Stay still, Ben Coleman. Look, I swear, in case you got him going. Yeah. Stay still, baby. You're taking too many shots inside, I told. Throw the right hand to the body, I told. Okay? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, I Listen to me. We got six minutes. Come on, baby. I told you, got six minutes. Give me the six minutes for Jerry. That's it. it started with that short right hand again. You know, this fight is just turning back and forth so much. And I think the body shot in there had a lot of effect on him. And I don't know if Atari is going to fully recuperate from that volley. We know that Mickey Ward can keep fighting through this kind of action. Ward landed yes. 42 out of 71 punches. We're in not round. sure about Gaddy because right. he hasn't yeah. been in this kind of a war with as a strong a fighter as Ward before. That body shot again. That's the body shot. It's the left hook to the body. Ward's money punch. And this knockdown counts. And he is hurt. This is it. It's, it's not going to recover. It's not like a head punch. He may not be able to recover. I don't think so. And, and Ward is going to go right back down there again. Right to the body again. He's still hurting from the body punch also still. In addition to the head. Arturo Gatti refusing to go down as Mickey Ward pounds away. In the past, this is where Arturo Gatti has been dangerous. But Ward should go back to the body again. Gatti risking another low blow penalty to try to get Ward off of him. himself out for the time being with yes. that tremendous barrage in the first minute. Just look at this. Unbelievable. Can you believe there's still a minute and a half to go in the round? Gaddy blinking away the blood in his right eye. Can't see out of the right eye. Vicious body shots by Gaddy. Ward nods as if to say, come on. trying to get a break. Ward should go right back to the body. That, that's where he needs to go to the body. You know, you dream of fights like this, but the very seldom do they live up to the expectation. This is even more than you can dream of. Just imagine if you bought a ticket. Stop it, Frank. You can stop it any time. Arturo Gatti's out on his feet. Frank Capitino's going to let him keep going. Gatti doesn't even have the strength to tie Ward up. And, and Ward is tied. Ward and here comes Gatti back. Less than 10 seconds in the round. Gatti's going to survive the round. This 
should be the round of the century. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm not gonna let you take this punishment. Okay? Now look at me. Look at me, Arturo. Tell me something. This guy is done. I know it's a tough fight, Matt. You got it in there. Mickey Ward right, said right he heard you see Gaddy got hurt with the body shot and that that's did more damage now he's coming back Mickey Ward said he would retire if he loses this fight from the way Gaddy went back to the corner in, in most conditions this fight would have been stopped right here he may have more fighting left in him gentlemen in round nine by CompuBox numbers this fight's gonna be stopped. No, nope, it's not. No, no, no. Fight ain't over. Fight ain't over now. Last round. Get back in the corner. All the way back. All the way back. I thought Buddy McGirt was gonna stop it. I uh, know. After now having said to his fighter, we now wouldn't we let him go. take any more punishment. Now we're gonna go. Round 10. In round 9, they landed 110 punches between them. And they were all power shots. What's your scorecard? Okay, Jim, 85-84, Mickey won. I think that it's pulled ahead with that shot that knocked that Toro Gaddy down. He certainly runs for the eighth round, so I got Mickey won up by a point. Interestingly enough, this round is 30 seconds short because that timekeeper never stopped the damn clock at the beginning of the round. That's right. This round's only going to be about two and a half minutes. Which is good news for Gaddy. He's come out and asserted himself again at the beginning of the round. But does Gaddy have a full two minutes left in the tank? I'm pretty sure Ward does. Ward looks hurt now, yeah. but he's he keeps coming. Ward has got it, but he's going to have to let it go because the clock is ticking. And it, at this point, Gaddy's winning around, and this may be the crucial round of the fight. I think Gaddy's having trouble seeing out of both eyes now, Emmanuel. Yes. But he doesn't have trouble firing away. Hard body shot by Gaddy. Knocks Ward back. Ward is exhausted. Gaddy sees that and seems to have taken some yes, and he's taken fresh it air from, from it. And he's winning this fight now. I am humbled by watching these two guys take the punishment they are taking. Well, we told you it might be a candidate for fight of the year. We didn't know it would be a candidate for fight of the century. This is the way it has to end. Arturo Gunny, Irish Mickey Ward, two of the most honest fighters in the sport of boxing, circa 2002. table it was Arturo Gotti there an exhausted Gotti throwing 50 punches in the 10th round while Ward could only throw 48 excuse me Gotti landing 50 punches <laughs> throwing 99 an incredible performance by an exhausted fighter in the crucible of a
toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Uh, before Harold gives his score, I had Gaddy winning by a couple of points. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at some highlights from throughout the fight. And virtually every so, minute of the fight yeah. produced amazing highlights. Emmanuel, put the headset back on here. We're going to get a look at what went on throughout this pitch battle as Arturo Gatti came out in the first Just couple of rounds through. and tried to assert okay. himself as a boxer. Mickey Ward cut above the eye in the first round. And through the early rounds, Gatti's hand speed and maneuverability were the difference in the fight. But Mickey Ward, typically for the Lowell, Massachusetts battler, kept on coming, got closer to Arturo, and in the middle rounds of the fight began to assert himself through a straight right hand upstairs and his trademark vicious left hook to the body until finally Gaddy went down from accumulated punishment in the ninth round. And then Arturo got up and assaulted Ward again and came back to win the latter half of the ninth and then clearly won the tenth round. And now we wait with suspense for the decision. You, go, you care to pick a winner, Emmanuel? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, our fan, I'd have to go with Arturo Gatti, in my guess, simply because he was busier and more consistent. Fighters, fighters were on the canvas twice in the fight in round four. It was Ward who went to the canvas on what was immediately ruled by referee Frank Cappuccino, a low blow by Gaddy. And then in round nine, it was Gaddy who went to the canvas from an accumulation of punishment. The most important punch being that trademark left hook to the body by Ward. And this was clearly a knockdown. And I feel that if Ward had went back to that same body shot, he would have won by knockdown. Here's Mark Biro with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Judge Frank Lombardi scores the bout 94-94, a draw. Judge Richard Flaherty scores it 94-93. Judge Steve Weisfeld sees it, 95-93, all to the winner by majority decision, Irish Mickey Ward. Ward. numbers after this near incredible display Gaddy landing 82 more punches than Ward throwing 229 more punches than Ward Ward landing at the higher connect percentage Arturo for all his skill still doesn't choose to defend himself all that much total power punches Ward landing 55% Gaddy landing 60% the fight living up to all of its expectations. All in all, these are astonishing numbers reflecting the enormous punishment dished out to both fighters. Victory carved out by Ward on the basis of the point deduction against Gaddy for the low blow and the point bonus for Ward because of the knockdown. That produced the difference in the fight. Let's go to Larry Merchant standing by in the ring. Thank you, Jim. And thank you guys for giving us a memorable night at the fights. Your impression of the fight, was this as tough as anything you've been through, Mickey? Uh, most definitely. Uh, Toro's a gentleman. He's a great fighter. He's proved, he didn't have to prove nothing to no one tonight. He's proved over the years what he can do. You know, he, he's a great man. He's a great warrior. And I have nothing but total respect for him. This fight was a very close fight. This fight could have went either way in my, in my mind. I take nothing from a Toro. He's a great man, but he's a great guy. Is our manager, uh, Pat Lynch. It's a great team. They're great people. Arturo, your impression? Have you ever been in anything like that? Uh, not really. He's a very tough guy. Uh, you know, I hit him with some good shots. 
he kept getting stronger every round and uh, I gotta give it to him you know it's a tough fight close fight he could have gone either way I just thought that uh, I shouldn't have got a point taken off for a low blow because then I was not intentional but that's all right you know was his durability his ability to take your punches the difference in the fight well yeah I you know he's a tough guy and uh, he's got a good defense you know for a guy that don't move a lot he's got a pretty good defense <laughs> You know, sometimes you know you don't need to move your head that much not to get hit. At the end of the ninth round, what, what, at the end of the ninth round, what, was your uh, trainer trying to stop the fight, Buddy McGirt? Uh, not at all. You know, he told me if I wanted to keep going, keep going. He said it's a close fight. You could win this fight. This is the last round. You take this round, you have the fight. And uh, you know, I want to keep going. You know, he hurt me to the body. He's a strong guy, you know. Were you almost out in that ninth round? Uh, actually, I was trying to take my uh, my breath back, and uh, and he kept punching me. But no, I'm all right. You know, did I see him gone, but I'm not. Did you <laughs> Did you think he was finished in that ninth round? Oh yeah. To be honest with you, I did. But um, I did. But you can't take nothing. You can't take nothing for granted. What to He's like you like take rock. He's like granted. All right, we're gonna you know? like take a look at the ninth round, guys. And I'd like you both to describe what you see as we show that entire ninth round, a round none of us who have seen are likely to forget. Did he surprise you the way he boxed and was able to continue? Yes. Yeah, the total's a very good box up beside of a brawler. That's what I was worried about. All right, that, that body punch really did some damage. Well, you know, he, he was hitting me through the body throughout the fight, and uh, that last one just caught the, the right spot. You know, a body shot is not something you can recuperate. Right. All right, when you saw how hurt he was with that body shot, did you think he would even survive the round? I didn't, but like, like I said, this guy is like granite, man. I mean, I, I don't know how to explain it. I never hit no one with shots like that. My hand's killing me, my elbow. I don't know. What the hell has he got in his head? I don't know. Tell me, man. All right, did you punch yourself out a little here? Jesus, I don't know. He can't come back. I said, damn. I just had a key to him. One, two, one, two, and two straight punches, you know? When he was throwing so many punches, Arturo, did it enter your mind this guy could punch himself out here? Well, that, I, I thought so that, you know, I said, you know what, he's going to punch himself out in the 10 rounds in my round. And uh, the, the, the 10 rounds, I won that round. You know, I thought it did enough to win the fight. But, you know, Mick Ward doesn't stop. He's in great shape. God bless him. 36 years old. He's got a lot to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm a, I'm, he's, he's changed his life around. I'm more proud of Toro for that, for any, any boxing he could ever do. He's a great man. That, that's a man to do that. Boxing is just a piece of our life. The, the real life's outside the ring, and uh, he's proven he's better than it. All right, let's stadium. keep watching this at the, as this fight enters in its last minute, and he keeps coming at you. Were you exhausted by that time, Mickey? Oh, I, I, I don't know what I was. I was just dead. Yeah, I was tired. I mean, I thought I had him, and uh, he, he kept coming, you know. It's, he's a warrior. What can you, uh, nothing else I can say. He showed his toughness, you know. So did you get a second wind here? Well, in the last round, you know, I knew I needed this. This is the ninth round. Oh, the so. ninth. Is it? Oh, wow, that's a long round. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a long round to watch. But, um, yeah, and I got the second win. I knew I was hurt. I had to come back strong. I did come back strong, and I kept, I was keep, trying to keep my energy for the 10th round. And that's what I did, to come back stronger on the 10th. When you went back to the corner, were you afraid they were going to stop the fight? No, 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 no. no. If they didn't stop in the ninth, they won't stop in the tenth because everybody knows who I am. I'm the comeback boy. <laughs> you were bloody from early in the fight. Did that blood bother you, Mickey? It bothered me early on, uh, but it kind of uh, Al Gavin did a great job in on, uh, so I felt better that the fight went on. That's it, guy. Man. This is unbelievable. You've been in a lot of rounds like this. Anyone quite as intense? No, not really. I'll push right up there at the top, you know. Right up there at the top, not the the top. I don't know. He's a warrior. Not as you can say, he's a tough guy. All right, Mickey. Thank you guys uh, very much. One question. Do you guys want to do this again? Uh, I would love to. I would love to uh, get a rematch if it's possible. And uh, I think we should do it again. We can do it. We'll do it. You get most of the money is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, can, we can talk, you know. <laughs> we even money. It's a great fight and two great warriors, you know. It's honest, honesty, you know. He's an honest guy. We've got a great fight together. I think we should do it again. Thank you guys very much for a great night. Back to you, Jim. All right. A little bit of trivia. Tenth round of Holyfield Bow 1.
ninth round to Barrera Morales won, and now that ninth round. I think those are the three greatest rounds I've ever seen in boxing. Well, that ninth round was about three ninth rounds all in one. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if my heart could stand another one of those. Let myself. me ask you this. Can either fighter, fighter ever be the same after a fight like this? You know, we've said that so many times about both of those guys, and they keep coming back, but I don't know if anybody can take that type of a punishment and come back and be the same. But at least they'll be going back against each other, so they won't be going against <laughs> someone fresh. Oh, it's been a busy eight days in the 140-pound division last Saturday night on the undercard of Felix Trinidad's comeback against Hasin Sharifi in Puerto Rico. We saw a pitched battle between two fighters from Miami, former Cuban defector Diabele Hurtado against hard puncher Randall Bailey. Bailey came in with 25 knockouts in 26 fights and put Hurtado down after going down himself in the first round. But then in the seventh round, with the fight seemingly turning against him, Diabele Hurtado released an unexpected barrage of body punches and eventually scored a TK over Bailey to stamp himself as a future contender. And then tonight, the acknowledged champion in the division, Costa Zou, beat Ben Tacky in Las Vegas. Unanimous decision. So Zou holds on to the 140-pound title and looks forward to bigger fights down the road. Maybe against Irish Mickey Ward or Arturo Gatti. Although, of course, what everybody's going to want to see, Larry, is these two guys going against each other again. Now, if they can stand it, we can. Oh, my God. You know, price fighters sign on for a life of pain and struggle, risk and reward, and those fighters who honor that contract are the ones who move us and thrill us the way Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward did tonight. Yeah, I'd say once in a lifetime, except luckily for us, <laughs> it happens just a little bit more often than that. You don't see this much of the time, though. For instance, earlier this evening, Prince Nassim Hamed made his first return to the ring in 13 months after having been taken apart by Marco Antonio Barrera in Las Vegas last May. A nice long layoff for Hamed before he came back against carefully hand-picked opponent Manuel Calvo of Spain. Now, you remember what happened last May when after the typical elaborate entrance, Hamed was embarrassed through the course of a 12-round fight by Barrera who showed greater skills, greater will, and a full understanding as to exactly how to blunt the Prince's power game. Barrera was so confident of victory by the last round that he even decided to take an intentional one-point penalty to further humiliate Hamed by running his head into the ring post to punctuate his victory. Boom! One of the biggest moments in boxing in the year 2001. So that was what Hamed needed to put behind him psychologically as he came back into the ring tonight against a carefully chosen, non-dangerous Spanish opponent before a supportive home crowd in England. And of course there was yet another elaborate entrance as the Prince made sure to indicate that nothing will change about the showbiz element of his game. Although he did not jump over the top rope into the ring, but rather stepped between them, the old style way, to face Calvo. What happened from that point forward wasn't in the script as the Prince had to go the distance to grind out a decision against the hand-picked opponent. Uh, they, they unearthed every cemetery in Europe looking for an opponent they could beat, but they found somebody who was a little bit more alive than they expected. And the Prince looked like somebody who took 13 months to get back on the horse, took that knockdown, but it was not called a knockdown. And he didn't look like he was really happy to be back on the horse. Emmanuel, you used to train him. You don't anymore. What do you think of what you see of the Prince here? Well, it was not an impressive performance, but, you know, I hope that he gets himself back together because he still is a very colorful fighter and a good puncher, and he's good for the business. Down the stretch, the crowd looked for the signature Hamed knockout. Sometimes it has come in the late rounds, but it was not to be the case tonight in London. And as some segments of the crowd booed, Hamed ground his way forward toward what became a unanimous decision victory over Calvo. As I mentioned, not in the script. Certainly the Prince would have wanted to come back with one of the thunderous knockouts on which he built his reputation as a uniquely hard-punching featherweight. But he's back, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing him in future engagements. What does tonight's victory uh, mean to the Prince's future business? Well, he suffered one of the most popular defeats in boxing history when he lost to Barrera. 
And off of uh, the snippets that we saw of his fight tonight, I'd say that um, he has a way to go to prove to us that still that he's more of a prize fighter than a showman. All right, let's talk about another Englishman because uh, within less than uh, 12 hours from now, our Emmanuel Stewart will be back in the Poconos in Pennsylvania to further train Lennox Lewis for his defense of the heavyweight championship on June 8 against a fellow named Tyson in Memphis. How does Lennox look? I would say Lennox not only is in good shape, he's looking pretty ornery and mean. He's at the same mode that he was in for the rematch with Hasim Rockman. He wants to knock Mike Tyson out. He feels that Mike Tyson is overrated. He's been gone a long time ago. The people are still trying to hold on to Mike Tyson of the late 80s. They don't want to realize that it's gone. And Lennox said he's going to shut him up and knock him out. And according to Lennox, eliminate boxing of his last misfit. Those are Lennox's final words, and he's very strong about that. Some people think that Mike's quotes from the past couple of weeks are simply the manic ravings of a lunatic too far gone. I personally believe that, among other things, he's trying to get under Lennox's skin and make him think about other things besides his business in the ring. Is Lennox distracted at all by Mike's act? And Lennox, as you have read, probably said that when Mike was in prison and he was saying he was reading, he was probably reading comic books. Lennox has no fear of Mike, and Mike has admitted that himself. This is the only fighter that he's fought that he says not only he knows that Lennox Lewis doesn't fear him, but Lennox Lewis intimidates and picks with him every time they get together publicly. So that puts Mike in a different role than he's used to being in, and I think it's going to have a profound effect on the fight. Lennox is totally confident that he's a big, good man that's been fighting good quality fighters, but Mike Tyson, for the most part, hasn't even been fighting too much the last five years, let alone the caliber guys that he's been fighting. Manny, does Lennox, that mean you're predicting an early round knockout? Then it's going to knock him out early. All right. We'll look forward to seeing you then on June 8 when you come back. and uh, As a winner. As a winner. All right. <laughs> You'll be there as a trainer. The fighter will be the winner. And thanks very much for being with us. We'll have a final word on what took place here on The Ring and Boxing After Dark in a moment. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming programs. HBO presents a new dramatic series, The Wire. There's a chain of command, Dickinson. You gotta serve somebody. And it's always gonna be that way. Except you do that for 20, 30 years. What do you have? Thing is, you gotta be patient. Learn the job, love the job. If I'm in these projects a year from now, might as well be dead. The Wire, Sunday, June 2nd. Tap in. Across the span of time, there have been rulers, warriors who have conquered all they've seen. Now, Evander Holyfield, the legendary four-time world champion, seeks the crown again. But before he can reign supreme, he must overcome a formidable foe, The Rock, Hasim Rahman. Two former heavyweight kings out to reclaim their throne. Holyfield versus Rahman, live Saturday, June 1st on HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Also that night, we bring you a preview show, counting down to the Lennox Lewis-Mike Tyson pay-per-view showdown on June 8th. We'll go inside the ropes of the most highly anticipated heavyweight championship ship fight in years, in years, you know, with interviews, speeches, and a roundtable discussion. And then a week later, Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson finally enter the ring to settle supremacy in the heavyweight division, the event the entire sporting world has been talking about, which may go down as the biggest money heavyweight championship fight in history, June 8th, live on pay-per-view. Earlier this evening, we hope that you were fortunate enough to be among the audience who watched this Mickey Ward, Arturo Gatti war on Boxing After Dark. A majority decision for Ward forged on the margin of the penalty point against Gatti for low blows and the knockdown point that Ward scored in the ninth. One judge, in fact, gave Ward a 10-7 round in the ninth, and that really was the margin of victory. But it was close, but it was great. Next on HBO, stay tuned for Six Feet Under, which amazingly, neither fighter is. And so now, for our entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Rick Bernstein. Tonight's edition of Boxing After Dark, produced by Thomas Odelfelt. He's getting married next week. Congratulations, Thomas. Directed by Mark Payton. Associate directors Brian Lockhart and Cameron Penn. Assistant to the producer, Abteen Spike Motia. Production manager, Mark Hayden. Technical supervisor, Bob Hunter. And the technical director, Joe Abanda.
This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.